Hey there, everybody. Um, I looked at the video as, as the um, camera turned on, and I was surprised how dark it was, and it's 8.30, so summer is definitely drawing to an end. Um, it looks dark in my house. <laughs> anyway, um, so tonight I am going to uh, give Dale's Pale Ale a try. Um, I've seen some stickers for this, and I, I laughed about it um, and um, took a picture and posted it to my uh, Uncle Dale's wall. Um, and then uh, it actually showed up in a um, um, variety pack, multi-pack, um, that I uh, bought. So I'm excited to give this a shot. Um, so the Pale Ale uh, is 6.5% alcohol by volume, um, which is actually over the American Pale Ale... Um, uh, range, which is 4.5 to 6.2. Um, so it's not necessarily to style in that respect, but I hardly ever um, argue for beer that has more alcohol than we expect. Um, the other thing that excites me about this particular beer is that um, it's in a red, white, and blue can, and I'm going to try it tonight in my Rosie the Riveter um, glass. And so this also is a beer review in honor of the um, Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront National Historic Place um, World Guinness World Record that I helped set this weekend. Um, previously, the Guinness World Record was 776 uh, women dressed as Rosie the Riveter, um, and this weekend, yeah, this weekend we had 1,084. So um, we're was waiting. Very surprising. Yeah, we're waiting for the official announcement. Um, but uh, we have broken the record, I'm, I, um, so that's exciting. So red, white, and blue American Pale Ale in my Rosie the Riveter um, glass. So yep, let's give this a shot. American. Um, so Pale Ale. Um, a Pale Ale, I think, oftentimes is expected to be... Um, I know, baby. Um, pale Ale is often, oftentimes expected to be... Um, Loggery, or maybe I always expect it to be loggery. Maybe that's more uh, accurate. Um, but a pale ale um, is a lighter, uh, slightly less hoppy, hop forward, or at least hop aggressive version of a um, of an IPA. Uh, so, or probably more uh, accurately, is that that an IPA is a more aggressively hopped version of an American pale ale. So, American pale ale um, should have some nice malt backbone to it. Uh, and some yeast qualities, um, getting some bready, toasty, biscuity kind of flavors, but also pretty hoppy. Um, and um, so that's what we're looking for as we give this a shot. Yes, please recycle that. Um, okay, so smell. Mmm, lots of hoppiness going on here. Citrusy. And it definitely has some malty quality to it. Um kind of in the background. Mm. Yum. Okay, so this is a, and of course you can't see it in this this video unfortunately. Um this has a, a like a uh, an almost amber color to it. Um and it looks like it's pretty crystal clear. Yeah, crystal clear. Um and it doesn't look like it's heavily carbonated. It did pour with a nice head. Looks like it's going to stick around. Um, which is what we would like to see. So, um, moderately large, um, white to off-white head with good retention. Um, usually pretty clear, although I guess the dry hop versions, when they're throwing hops in at the last moment, um, can tend to be a little bit more hazy. Um, flavor. Mm. This is um, citrusy and bitter, and it, it actually, um, I don't know if my dimples are giving it away, but it kind of like activated my jaw. Um, whew, bitter, um, but bitter in a good way. Um, and so, like I said, it's, it's reminiscent of the um, bitterness that we would expect from a pale ale, but it has, excuse me, from an IPA. Um, but it's backed up a little bit more by the malt character. Um, and so I'm definitely getting that here. Um, um, it's got a... So, so if I focus on malt... has a very sweet, 
kind of bready quality to it. Um, and it has a kind of metallic taste. Um, and I always forget what those... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Chemicals. I always forget what those chemicals are called. Um, but that's how... Um, I, I, I don't even know. So it kind of has a metallic um, taste to it. Um, but it's definitely hoppy. So it definitely has a, a very citrusy, um, aggressive hop hops to it. Um, bitter. It has a nice bitter aftertaste and it's relatively strong, um, drying almost. Um, so as far as mouthfeel goes, um, it's, um, medium body. It has a decent carbonation to it. Um, and, um, not an astringent finish, but a, a bitter finish. Um, so you can definitely tell, like, the hops kind of lingers there. Um, but done very nicely. So this is, um, it's a, uh, you know, hoppy, but refreshing, um, very drinkable, um, and, um, and pretty well balanced. I don't think it's, it's evenly balanced between hops and malt. It's definitely, um, in the, in the, um, uh, on the hoppier side, but um, very well done. And um, so, history for this particular style that it's an American adaptation of an English pale ale reflecting indigenous ingredients hops, malt, yeast, and water, uh, often lighter in color, cleaner in fermentation byproducts, and having less caramel flavors than English counterparts. And I feel like a lot of English ales have that kind of caramel, um, like roasty complexity to them, um, partially probably to the malts that they're using or the or the roasting process, um, but the hops as well. So their hops tend to be earthy um, and complex, and I think um, like fully on the other side of the spectrum is American hops that are very bitter, bitter, citrusy, um, grapefruity, piney, resiny, um, and um, it, and so it really has an entirely different effect on the beer. Um, and I don't think I've ever had a, a, an English hops like really zing my jaw um, the way American hops can do. Um, so there's some overlap in color between American Pale Ale and American Amber Ale, um, as we saw here. Um, you know, this is um, definitely an amber, amber in color. Um, the American Pale Ale will generally be cleaner and have less caramelly, caramelly malt profile, less body, and often more finishing hops. So, um, in this respect, it's totally nailed this um, category. So, very well done. Um, some commercial examples are um, Sierra, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, Stone Pale Ale, um, Bear Republic XP Pale Ale, Anderson, Val Anderson Valley Polico, um, Gold Pale Deschutes Mirror Pond, Full Sail, there's some big hitters in this category, um, Firestone Pale Ale, um, Kona Fire Rock, um, anyway, great, great beers in this category. Um, I feel like this is usually, um, uh, you know, people who drink lagers probably don't necessarily or aren't used to the hoppiness that you're going to find um, in a pale ale. Um, and, you know, and probably by mistake will pick up a pale ale thinking that it's going to be a very mild flavor and go, holy moly, there's so much hops going on here, this is aggressive. Um, but I feel like um, this is a good gateway drug because if you can, like, get past what you're expecting that it might taste like uh, and really enjoy the beer, that it's a very... Uh, enjoyable um, style. So um, I'm actually coming to like American Pale Ales uh, a lot. I had kind of avoided them in the past for not any particular reason, um, but maybe it's just because I've had um, so many IPAs at this point that Pale Ales um, pale by comparison uh, and seem innocuous. But um, nonetheless, bad jokes aside, um, good beer and i um, glad that I drank it um, and, uh, cheers to, uh, Rosie the Riveter, um, World War II home front national historic place, I think is the name of that park, uh, and, uh, beating the Guinness, or setting a new Guinness World Record, so, um, that's amazing. Keep your eye out for it in the news, maybe you'll see me, uh, on KQED. Bye! Have a good night!